Good morning, and welcome to St. Francis Episcopal Church here in Greensboro, North Carolina. I am Father Milton Williams, and I'm the rector here at St. Francis. On behalf of our assistant, Deacon Matt Addington, and every member of this congregation, I welcome you to worship this day. Today, we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. We celebrate it not just here at St. Francis, but for every church that worships in a rich Catholic tradition as we do. I must confess, the Feast of All Saints is one of my favorite feasts. If you consider yourself a visitor with us today, I invite you to complete a visitor's card that you can find on our website. Fill in the card, submit it, and it will give us an opportunity to welcome you more completely to this wonderful congregation, this community of faith we love and call St. Francis. By way of announcements related to our young people in the congregation, our youth will be meeting for handbells today in the parish hall at four o'clock. And connected with the feast of the Feast of All Saints, uh, there will be a Halloween drive-through here on campus this evening at five o'clock. We hope you are able to attend. Again, it's my honor and pleasure to welcome you to worship here at St. Francis on this, the Feast of All Saints. And now, let us gather in our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, and let us prepare ourselves to have an experience with the living God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, 
and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Great is God, and great to be praised. Look upon him, and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Great is God and great to be praised. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Great is God, and great to Thank you. 
A reading from Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after dark, he sat down. His disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil things falsely against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. In 2017, National Geographic did a study to find the happiest countries in the world. What countries do you think were in the top ten? How many believe that the U.S. made it into the top ten of the happiest countries? I am sad to say, but perhaps you may not be surprised to hear that the U.S. barely broke the top 20. There are definitely many criteria that can be applied to determine if a country is happy or not. But according to the criteria used by National Geographic, the U.S., Canada, and Germany are not among the happiest. Which countries do you think were deemed some of the happiest? Denmark was one of them. That fits the stereotype of the proverbial happy Dane. But why are Danes happy? Among other things, they have a great social system, an infrastructure that invites people to walk or bike and be active and thus healthy. They work less than 40 hours a week on average and have at least four weeks of vacation. And all of that is with fair pay. In addition, most Danes belong to some sort of social club or organization. And because of the free time Danes have, they can balance work and play and work and rest. The Danes place a high value on education, health care, and equitable opportunities. Their life expectancy is high, and they rely on social support systems and have a deep respect for the planet. Another country that is happiest among Earth, and this may be more surprising, is the country of Costa Rica. Here again, we see another good social system. Having been to Costa Rica many times, I can tell you that these people tend to be much, much poorer than most other countries on this list, especially Denmark. And they work longer hours. But in Costa Rica, they have very strong family and social ties. Faith and church life also play an important role in the happiness of Costa Ricans. The government actually supports the Catholic Church, and just recently, the government now supports the Episcopal Church. In addition, Costa Ricans love to celebrate and love to dance. They work hard and they celebrate with abundance. Costa Ricans work long hours but they do not over the schedule themselves or their families 
in their downtime. So again, we have this balance of work and play and rest. People are defined by their relationships, not their work. And that makes them happy. Costa Ricans live by a creed. Pura vida, pure life. Living life in the fullest, most special way. Respecting life by enjoying what you have and who you are with and all that you come into contact to. When this is the only way you know, and the only way you understand life to exist, being joyful, being happy, isn't optional. It just happens. Might you be able to tell now why the U.S. did not make this list? Here in the U.S., especially in the U.S., people seem to be defined most by their accomplishments or the lack thereof. It starts early on in children in elementary school, and it doesn't get any better as they get older. Teenagers applying to college are under enormous pressure to stand out in order to get into the college of their dreams. And in order to stand out, you need to accomplish extraordinary things, even at a young age. Another way to look at this is you need to be better than the person next to you. Take Stanford, for example. It's a well-known fact that this is one of the nation's top schools. However, it is an unwritten rule that most students who get into Stanford University have already created a successful business. What pressures can this attitude, this way of life cause? Or look at our social media-driven world where the number of likes reign supreme. And images can be improved with endless filters. As if to say, a photo of the way God made you is not good enough. No wonder teen suicide, depression, and anxiety rates are higher now than they have ever been. And that's just for teenagers. I need not mention the political, racial, socioeconomic disparities tacked on to the normal stressors of adulthood most of us face these days. And we all experience to a certain degree that our value in society is determined by our accomplishments. For us in the workforce, our value to our company, to our institution, to our clients is determined by what we know, our expertise, or how well we perform our assigned duties, and possibly the duties assigned to those beside us. Sometimes it's very hard for people who lose their jobs or retire to see their value if they can't perform or achieve any longer. For those of us with kids, we know the pressures they face in school and after school and on the weekends. It seems that there is added pressure to be in four or five different activities or sports. If not our accomplishments, then we are judged and judge by our consumeristic ideas. How many times have we heard the phrase, you get what you pay for, Or thought, if I only had this thing, life would be better, would be easier. How about, this is really not what I signed up for. Or, this no longer meets my needs or my wants. And we take our money or our time and go elsewhere. No doubt COVID has caused us to think in these terms. 
What have we taken our time and our treasure from? And where have we replaced that time and that treasure? And what have we replaced our time and our treasure with? Years ago, as I went through clinical pastoral education as a part of seminary education, part of my assignment was at an assisted living community in Waco, Texas. One of the residents I visited most days was a lady confined to her bed with Parkinson's and suffering from deep depression. All her life, she had been busy working as a teacher and raising a very large family. Her story was especially sad because to my knowledge, she hardly had any visitors. Her husband lived in the same facility. Even if it was in the independent living section, he seemed annoyed and saddened by her condition. And we all know these illnesses are some of the worst because they take those who we truly love and turn them into different people. This may explain why her husband only visited once a week and very briefly. It may have been just too hard. I recall a particular visit with her. She would lift up her shaking hand and exclaim very bitterly, Useless! They are useless! I am useless. And I was stricken how this poor woman, who had been appreciated and valued as long as she could perform her duties, now lost that value, even with her own family her own husband. It made me wonder, what are we in the eyes of society? Are we human beings? Are we human beings where we are valued simply because we are human and that affords us certain things and certain rights no matter our accomplishments or lack their of? Are we human beings or are we human doings? Where we get what we get based on what we have done or what those who have come before us have done? Is who we are based on the status of those who have gone before us? Are we people who love and admire unconditionally those who see the good in the poor, the meek? Can we find hope in the eyes of the hungry? Are the people we admire most the people who are behind the scenes making peace in the world? Or are, are our role models those who are successful athletes, those with the most money, those who have the newest things and the biggest home? Let us not forget that the world has its own beatitudes. Blessed are the rich, for theirs are the yachts and the mansions. Blessed are the independent, the self-sufficient, the I am good enough on my own types, for they did it their way. Blessed are the young families with an appropriate number of children, for they are the envy of society. Blessed are the braggadocios, for they have the world in their pocket. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for wealth because their bank accounts are overflowing. Blessed are those who feel no sorrow over their sin, neither true repentance, for nothing will be able to penetrate their hardened hearts. Blessed are those who show no mercy, who depend... Who depend on everything, and demand that every wrong be righted. 
who easily take offense, who fight back against their opponents with slander, gossip, and outright brutality, for their wrath will be abated. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in this fleeting world. Today is All Saints Day, the day we remember all the children God called to be saints. And we tend to especially on this day remember all the saints who have gone before us. One of the questions we may have today is what makes a saint? What do we have to do How do we have to be in order to be considered a saint? For those coming out of or being familiar with the Roman Catholic or Orthodox tradition, a saint may be someone who has lived a very special, holy life. A saint may be someone who has lived holier than 99% of people. And we may think of saints like St. Francis, St. Christopher, St. Clare, St. Joan. But what Martin Luther pointed out to us is that it's all about God's grace. He pointed out, strangely and thankfully, that for God it doesn't matter how good we are at things, how ambitious how intelligent, how visionary, or how creative we are. These traits are good and wonderful things, but they don't automatically grant us participation in the kingdom, the household of God. One adjective we heard in today's gospel over and over again is one of the most important ones in Scripture. Blessed. Blessed are you. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek, the merciful, the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted, those who are reviled, and those who are lied upon. Blessed are they. The Greek word used here for blessed is makarios, which is better translated happy. Happy are you. Happy are they. Imagine the scene in today's gospel. The Beatitudes, as we know them, are the beginning of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is followed by the crowds who have seen him perform miracles and heal the sick and talk about hope and deliverance from all that ails them. Jesus is surrounded by people, hungry, poor, desperate, oppressed. Jesus is also there with his disciples, just recently called and who are still trying to figure out who this Jesus is and who they are. And Jesus starts his sermon to the disciples and the crowds with a blessing, a call for happiness from God. Blessed are you. Happy are you. Happy are the poor. Happy are those who mourn. Happy are the meek. Happy are the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, and the persecuted. In short, happy are those, blessed are those who don't often measure up. Those who may even be seen as worthless and without any value. God's kingdom is open to them. God blesses them. God makes them happy. To God, all God's children are valuable. Or should I say invaluable? Because they are beloved. 
And it is that relationship which makes them, which makes us saints. We are defined by that relationship. We heard it said beautifully today in the readings from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Hear that again. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. It is no mistake that the word blessed and happy are the same. It is no mistake that the loving relationship we have found in God through Jesus is what makes us all saints. Our task now as saints is to go and share that love, that happiness, that blessing with the world. We all have things we are good at. And those things that we are good at, they also bring us joy. They also bring us happiness. They bring us a blessing. Those happy things that we are good at are no doubt gifts from God. And if they can bring us joy, we can use those things to bring others joy to bring others happiness, to bring others a blessing. If you think back to the saints that have shaped your life, this idea of joy sharing, of happiness sharing, of blessing sharing through the gifts of God probably ring true. Our task as the saints of God is sharing our happy, joyful gifts with all those we meet, with the hope that they too might find the joy of God, the love of God that teaches and shows all to know that they are a blessing and are the beloved children of God. This is the starting point of evangelism. It's just that simple. It's that easy. When being a saint, when doing evangelism, is simply sharing the happiness, the good news with others, certainly we can be the hands and feet of God in our own ways. This is why we sing a song of the saints of God. They lived not only in ages past. There are hundreds and thousands still. The world is bright with joyous saints who love to do Jesus' will. You can meet them in school or in lanes or at sea, in church or in trains or in shops or at tea. For the saints of God are just folk like me and I mean to be one too. May we learn to be human beings and not human doings. May we learn to find joy and happiness in our own sainthood. And may we share God's love and happiness and blessing with all our beloved here at St. Francis, with all the beloved here in Greensboro, and with all of the beloved in the world as we remember and honor the saints who have loved us, who have taught us to find God's joy and happiness and blessing. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, in the words our Lord Jesus Christ taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please respond to each bidding with hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, 
in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now is the time we are given to offer our gifts, our lives, our oblations unto the Lord. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. And now let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.